Hey everyone, my name is Erica. I work on Microsoft's Visual C++ team, and today I'm going to be chatting with you all about C++ cross-platform development with Visual Studio and the Windows subsystem for Linux. So I'm going to start by defining what we mean when we say native support for WSL and Visual Studio. I'm then going to introduce our CMake support in Visual Studio, and then the bulk of my time is going to be spent in a demo where I configure a CMake project to build and debug both locally on Windows and on the Windows subsystem for Linux. And then at the end, I'm going to quickly cover our WSL2 story. So since Visual Studio 2017, we've had support for building and debugging C++ projects uh, on remote systems over SSH. In Visual Studio 2019, we added native support for WSL. And WSL, or the Windows subsystem for Linux, if you haven't used it, lets developers run a Linux environment directly on Windows. And when we say our native support, what we mean is that instead of invoking commands on WSL as if it were a remote system over SSH, all commands are executed locally. This means there's just one single copy of your source tree and no need for Visual Studio to manage file copying or maintain two synchronous copies of your build tree, one on Windows and one on your Linux system. This leads to no dependency on SSH as well as performance improvements. If you're using Visual Studio 2019 version 16.4 or later, you can also leverage the integrated terminal to interact directly with WSL from Visual Studio. CMake is a cross-platform open source meta build system, and it's really popular among C++ developers, especially among those who are doing cross-platform development. It is our recommendation for anything cross-platform or with an eye to open sourcing. CMake support in Visual Studio means that you can open any folder containing a cmakelist.txt file and edit it, build it, and debug it locally on Windows, on a remote system, or on WSL without ever generating Visual Studio project and solution files. You can still leverage almost the same full suite of IntelliSense, code navigation, and debugging features that you might be used to when working with uh, Windows-based solutions, as well as some CMake-specific features that will make it easier for you to make sense of, edit, and author your own CMake scripts in Visual Studio. And all of this stuff I'm going to be showing and talking about more as a part of my demo. So with that, I'm just gonna hop in um, here I have a CMake project open in Visual Studio. It looks and behaves very similarly to a normal Visual Studio solution with a few key differences. The CMake settings editor is where you can specify what system CMake will be invoked on and where you'll be building. So again, that can be locally on Windows, that can be on a remote system connected over SSH, or that can be natively on WSL. So right now I'm building on WSL using the GCC toolset. The CMake settings editor is also where you can specify things like configuration type, any CMake variables or environment variables, and pick your compilers. The CMake settings editor is just an overlay on top of the CMake settings.json file, which can be checked in and shared between team members so that all of your project specific CMake configuration only needs to be done once. The project that I'm working with right now is just a calculator that takes in any number of postfix expressions and evaluates them. So I'll go ahead and run it and show you how it works. Um, note that because I'm building and running on WSL, whenever I start debugging, it's using the front end of the Visual Studio debugger backed by GDB. So here I have the Linux console window which is a way for me to interact directly with my applications running on WSL or on a remote system from Visual Studio. It's interactive, so I can give it some input. I'll read in an expression, x equals two, read in another expression, x plus x, and then evaluate the second expression, or in this case, x plus x. 
and it looks like I've hit an address sanitizer error. So address sanitizer is a runtime memory error detector for C and C++ that used to be native to Linux and Mac that we have integrated directly with the Linux workload in Visual Studio. So that address sanitizer errors will surface in the IDE alongside your code whenever you are debugging on WSL or on a remote system. And I say used to because we actually recently ported ASAN over to be used on Windows with the MSVC toolset as well. But it looks like I have a heat buffer overflow issue here. Um, so I'll dig around and see if I can see what's happening. So we'll jump over to the call stack and start stepping through. And here it looks like I have an array of expressions with two elements but we're trying to access the second element and it's index at zero, so that's out of bounds. So I wanna see if I can find where this M expression number is being set. So I will find all references. And it looks like these results returned at the top is where it's actually being set. So I'm gonna to jump to about, yeah, line 80, 90-ish. <clears throat> And yeah, here it looks like we're reading in all of the expressions, but then we're setting expression number equal to red number. And for a better user experience, this should probably be red number minus one. So that, for example, if the user wants to evaluate their second expression, we're accessing the first element of the array. So I'll change that here and here, save the file. And then I'm also gonna hop back over here and set a breakpoint where this is actually being evaluated so I can make sure it's behaving as I want. Um, I just set a normal breakpoint, but when you're debugging on um, WSL or a remote system with Visual Studio, you still have the full suite of debugging features available to you. So I could still make this, you know, a conditional breakpoint or a trace point, which doesn't halt code execution. And with that, I will restart the debugger. All right, <clears throat> back to my Linux console window. I'll just feed it the exact same input. So I'll read in x equals two, read in x plus x, evaluate the second expression, and this time the array still has two elements, but we are accessing the first element, so that looks a lot better. When I continue execution, it looks like two plus two does indeed equal four this time, so that's behaving as expected. Um, the last debugging feature that I wanna show off to you guys is that you can interact directly with the underlying debugger, in this case, GDB, and execute custom GDB commands. So if I hop on over to the command window, um, and I use the command debug.mi debug exec. Uh, MI engine is the open source engine that we use to interface with GDB. Then I can execute any GDB command. So let's say that I want to view an assembler dump of this print post fix expression. Then if I pause the debugger, I can view that full assembler dump right in the command window. And hopefully this shows you that when you are debugging on WSL or a remote system with Visual Studio, you can still leverage the same suite of debugging features that you might be used to when using an IDE like Visual Studio. So a really visual way to navigate the call stack or set breakpoints, as well as us bringing native Linux tooling uh, to Visual Studio. So things like ASAN or the ability to execute custom GDB commands. So, so far I've been debugging, but now I want to add a logging library in case anyone else who's using this runs into issues that they want to send on over to me. So I'll go over to my CMake list, which is where I set dependencies on third-party libraries. And I'm going to use the find package command. 
you can see that I'm getting IntelliSense suggestions and tooltips, and that's a part of the CMake in Editor documentation that we added to surface, surface official CMake docs directly in the IDE. So I'm going to add glog, which is just the logging library, and I'll add a config required. So I'll save that to regenerate the cache. And it looks like CMake is yelling at me because I don't actually have glog installed on WSL. But I'm getting this quick action to install glog using VC package. So I'll start that and then kind of walk you through what's happening. So if you haven't had it, haven't heard of it, VC Package is a cross-platform command line tool that can be used to bring down, build, and install C and C++ libraries from source on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So here you can see I'm installing the X x64 linux triplet of glog directly on wsl and all of the output is being routed to the output window so that i can keep an eye on it note that i only got this vc package quick action suggestion because i already had vc package installed on WSL, um, and I've included some links at the end of my deck that shows you how to get started with VC Package if you don't already have it. Um, if I hover over the library here, I can see that there's two commands I need to include to consume this library, the find package command, which I just added, and then the target link libraries command. Um, I actually already have that as well, so I'm just going to add glog. I can see that I'm inheriting these default linker options, default compile options, and default project options. If I didn't actually know what these default options were, we've added language services to CMake scripts so I can do things like peak definition and see those default linker options enumerated for me. Note that this is pulling from a separate file in a completely different subdirectory. And this is really common when you're working with large CMake projects. They're oftentimes structured across multiple different subdirectories with a lot of different CMake lists.txt. And so hopefully this is a way, uh, a tool that can make it easier for you to make sense of, edit, and author your own CMake scripts in Visual Studio. So it looks like this has been done for a while. Um, it's telling me glog, installation of glog has succeeded, regenerate the CMake cache to detect the new package. That's why I've been getting this gold bar up here. So I can regenerate the cache and I should be good to go. Over here in the Solution Explorer, the layout of my files currently matches the layout of my files on disk. And that's fine for this project because it's pretty small. But if I was working with a larger project, there's something called CMake Targets View, which is a more CMake centric way of viewing your code organized by target that can help you to more easily make sense of um, really large projects with more complex structures. We've recently also added CMake Project Editing Support in Visual Studio, and so that uh, is Visual Studio's attempt to help you easily add, rename, and remove file and target references to existing projects in Visual Studio. So let's say that I want to add a new source file. Just call it source.cpp. Instead of just dropping that file on disk, Visual Studio will try to guess where you can add a reference to that new source file in your CMake script so that it's actually picked up. Um, this is what MS Build does automatically behind the scenes when you're working in VCX Proj, but because there's a million different ways that you can author your own CMake scripts, Visual Studio will make its best guess. And if it has, uh, if there's any ambiguity, it'll suggest multiple different options as to where that reference can be added. And so you can view and preview them all and then only apply the changes that you wanna see. So, so far, even though CMake is cross-platform, cross I've only been building and debugging on WSL. So now I'm going to show you how easy it is to get started and retarget the same project for Windows. So I'll go back to the CMake settings editor, add a new configuration. This time it's going to be an x64 debug configuration. 
Um, there's nothing that I need to specify here, but again, this is where I can specify things like configuration type and my compilers. We have out of the box support for both Clang CL and MSVC when you're targeting Windows. So let me make this my active configuration and then select the same executable just so I can show you that it's the same application running both on WSL and on Windows. So here's my calculator. I can read in an expression x equals 2, x plus x, evaluate the second expression. Here I'm hitting the same breakpoint that I had set earlier when I was debugging on Linux. So you can see it's the same source code, same everything. Oops. So I'll stop debugging. Um, in Visual Studio 2019 version 16.4, there was support added for an integrated terminal, and that can be used to uh, interface with the developer command prompt, with CMD, or with a local WSL installation. So here is my, oops, here is my, um, local WSL installation, Ubuntu. It drops me right in my working directory, which you can see is the mounted C drive. So if I take a look at my file structure, I can again see that I only have um, one source directory, one root cmakelist.txt, one cmakesettings.json. So I'm using the same source code to target both Windows and WSL. If I cd into my build folder, then you can see I have two subdirectories, one for my WSL configuration that contains ELF binaries, and one for my x64 debug configuration that contains my Windows executables. So two different executables can be generated from the same source code. Um, right now, I'm just using this integrated terminal to navigate my file structure, but it can use to, be used to run command line tools or whatever steps you normally need to take outside of Visual Studio um, directly from the command line. All right, so another thing that we hear from cross-platform developers is that they oftentimes only build for one platform locally, and then they'll rely on their CI system to check build errors across their other target platforms after they've checked in. So we have a feature that will hopefully make it easier for you to check build errors across multiple platforms before checking in. So let's say that I add something um, or accidentally include something that is Windows specific, like including Windows.h. Then you can see I get these purple squiggles, which is basically telling me, hey, this is defined for your current active configuration, my x64 configuration, but it's not defined for one of your other configurations, in this case, WSL. If I make WSL my active configuration, then those squiggles should turn red because Windows.h is just not defined on Linux. But if I were to wrap this in an if def, so if def win32, then you'll see all these squiggles go away and I'm back to having platform agnostic code. So hopefully this will let you make it easier for you to check build errors across multiple platforms before checking in, especially if you're you know, typically a Windows shop and you build for Windows, but then you also want to make sure that you compile on Linux. Adding a WSL configuration is a really quick and easy way to do that. All right, so the last feature I want to show you guys is something we call the separation of build and debug, and that's the ability to separate your build system from the system that you are deploying to and debugging on. These two systems don't necessarily have to sit, have the same architecture or instruction set. Um, the example I'm going to be showing you today is pretty simple. I'm going to keep my same build configuration, so I will continue building natively on WSL, but I'm going to deploy to and debug on a Linux Docker container that's running locally and connected over SSH. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new debug configuration. Um, I want launch for Linux with GDB because I am going to be debugging on a remote host. 
and this adds a new CPP GDB template. We very recently streamlined the debug templates that are used when debugging with GDB on WSL or a remote system. So this might look a bit different than what you've seen with previous versions of VS. Um, the only changes that I need to make here is one, I will add a more friendly name um, just so I can identify this configuration. I need to add a project target, which in this case, I can just add my calculator. It just to, needs to be one of your um, targets that's already defined in this dropdown. And then I'll need to add the key remote machine name. So by default, the value of this key is synchronized with your build system, which is set in cmixsettings.json. So by default, when I'm debugging, I'm debugging where I'm building natively on WSL. Only when I want to separate these two systems do I need to specify this remote machine name in launch.vs.json. Um, and this will specify the machine that I am deploying to and debugging on. So I'll go ahead and select uh, my local host, which is my Linux Docker container running locally. And I will save that. This launch.vs.json file is always well you, where you will configure debugging sessions uh, for CMake projects in Visual Studio. So let me just pull up that Docker container real quick. Um, if I list the running processes, you can see that my only processes are SSH and bash. But when I select my custom debug configuration and start debugging, What's happening is that I am continuing to build locally on WSL, but I will be deploying to and start debugging on my Linux Docker container. So from Visual Studio's point of view, this looks exactly the same. I still have my Linux console window here to interact with the application. But if I jump back to my Docker container, then you can see that GDB is running and my calculator executable is running. And so I am debugging on this system. You can also see here in my build directory that only the binary folder has been copied over. There is no intermediate build output because the build is still happening locally on WSL. And this is only the things I need to be able to debug. All right, so that kind of wraps up the demo session. Let me jump back to the slide deck. To quickly summarize, some things we talked about today are debugging features that let you leverage um, the full Visual Studio debugging experience with CMake projects when you're working on a remote system or WSL, as well as Linux specific tooling like the Linux console window, ASAN, or executing custom GDB commands. We covered cross-platform VC package integration for library acquisition. I only did this on WSL, but it works the same on Windows or on a remote system. We covered CMake language services and project editing that make it easier for you to make sense of, edit, and author your CMake scripts. We covered platform-specific IntelliSense, or those purple squiggles, which will hopefully make it easier for you to check um, for build errors across multiple platforms before checking in. And we covered the ability to separate the system that you are building on from the system that you are debugging to and deploying on. One last note that I want to make is that this whole demo was done with a CMake project, but the same exact feature set minus the CMake specific features are available with MS build based Linux projects as well. And that can be an option for you if you're not really, if, if you're not writing cross platform code, like you're only building and debugging on Linux from Windows as your host operating system, or um, if you just don't want to use CMake. And then quickly, WSL2 works in Visual Studio, except you cannot yet use our native support if your source files are stored in the Linux root file system and the C++ team blog is where you should go for updates on that. That's it for my demo. Thank you guys. Um, the code base that I used is on GitHub if you want to play around with anything. C++ team blog is the place to go for all announcements. And then if you want to take a screenshot of this, this is some relevant documentation to get started with WSL or CMake support, um, debugging or configuring your launch file to be debug in Visual Studio, that launch.bs.json file and VC package.